Grace and peace to you and welcome to worship for Christmas Eve 2021 from Charleswood United Church in Winnipeg. My name is Michael Wilson. I'm joined by Benjamin in his remote studio location and by all the people that you are going to see who have played a role in bringing together this Christmas service just for you. This is a communion service and if you are unfamiliar with the uh, practice of communion in our tradition, I would say that you are most welcome to have at your side a piece of bread and, uh, and some juice or if you wish to substitute something else for the elements, that's all right with me. And if you want to just observe and commune with us in spirit, of course, that's all right too. There's no right way or wrong way to be in one another's company to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. This is the birth that we have heard cause heaven and nature to sing and if heaven and nature are singing on the occasion of this miraculous birth, then who are we to turn anyone away? You are welcome. You are invited. Most importantly, you are loved by the same God who loved Mary and Joseph and brought Jesus into being. We're delighted for your company among us. Merry Christmas to you. Let us worship together. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Let shepherds adore him. Let angels serenade him. Let Mary and Joseph protect him. For Christ is born in Bethlehem. Let heaven and nature sing their hymn of unending praise. Oh, come let us adore him. 
the birth of Jesus from Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, she treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. This last week, I received a most welcome invitation. It came from a longtime member of our church who for several years now has been shut in. And she invited me to visit with an expressed purpose. She wanted to have communion. We had a marvelous afternoon together and I was richly blessed by the experience. I could have skated around it, I suppose. I could have sent her a prayer, which she could have read. I could have asked that the person who does her grocery shopping would include grape juice and bread next time out. I suppose we could have spoken on the phone and taken the elements at the same time, or looked at one another through Zoom or Skype or FaceTime but something would have been missing. Something meaningful would have been left out. Sometimes you have to be in the same place at the same time. Same place, same time matters to us. Without same place, same time, the singers don't become a choir and the players don't become a team and the two teams can't make a game Without same place, same time, the meal doesn't become a banquet. Yeah, we can sing and play and eat, but without same place, same time, that secret ingredient, that special sauce, if I'm using that phrase properly, something so much more can't come into creation. Christmas is a celebration of the same place, same timeness of God. The Gospel of Luke tells us in the second chapter that Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph at a certain time and in a certain place. You read the story year after year, and you know the names I'm referring to. This birth took place in Bethlehem, which was in Judah. That's the same place. When Caesar Augustus had ordered a census, when Quirinius was governor of Syria, that is a time mark. The birth of Jesus takes place and has meaning because of same place, same time. And that meaning is that God is not in heaven alone, but is here on earth, amongst us, in the flesh. That God doesn't live just in eternity, though that is true, but in the present moment, in the measuring of time that marks the lives of you and I. You see, Christmas is not just the nativity, the birth of Jesus, It's also the incarnation, that the Word was made flesh and chose to dwell among us. I don't have to convince any of you of the merit, of the value, of the meaning of same place, same time. For nearly two years, we have only grown in appreciation of what same place, same time means for us. In the past year, We have recovered a taste, experienced some samples of the freedom we used to have for same place, same time. And in those small exercises of same place, same time, we have have rediscovered 
its meaning and importance. In the small uh, backyard wedding, in the, in the intimate gathering of a few friends and family for a burial, in coming into one another's house cautiously at first and knowing just how much our family and friends mean to us when we can be together in the same place at the same time and share a simple meal. If you can recognize in these brief descriptions incarnation as part of what we understand Christmas to be, if you can see in the birth story of Jesus the importance of being in the same place at the same time, the shepherds don't just hear the angels chorus and keep it to themselves. They go to the manger so that they, the ones who have heard the good news and the, those who, to whom the good news has happened, may be together in the same place at the same time. If that idea of incarnation as same place, same time means anything to you, then you'll recognize what is missing when we share communion in this format. Now, I can preside at the table and, and, and wear the stole and, and, and say the words. I can break the bread and fill the cup and consecrate the elements. But you're not here, and we are not together. We are not in the same place at the same time. And while there is great value, inherent value, in the present moment, because of the circumstances in which we are living, of, of, of making this a communion service and asking you to understand that you are invited, you are welcome, there is a place at this table for you. It has not gone away. It always was there and it still is. But there is something missing because we are not together. Some mystery unfolds when we take communion in one another's company. Some meaning is added that cannot be replaced. Some miracle is accomplished by saying this is the body and blood of Christ and that Christ is present, Christ is our host, and in our consuming we grow in our understanding of what it means to be the body of Christ in the world. I give thanks for the wonders of technology and for your willingness to be in communion in this way. But a time is coming. I believe it with all my heart. And that time is coming soon when once again we can be in the same place at the same time and it will be as it was in Bethlehem all those years ago, that the presence of God, which we have known and cherished and seek to honor, is made known to us in mysterious and wonderful ways, and all of creation will rejoice. Amen. Meanest state where all.
God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of light, giver of all life, source of love. We bless you for all your gifts. You bring creation to birth and send prophets to awaken us to your advent among us. We praise you for that holy night of hope and the wonder of this time of joy. We thank you for those who, like Mary, have the strength and courage to give birth to your love in the world. For those who, like the shepherds, dare to seek out the child of Bethlehem. We praise you that your everlasting light is shown to us in womb and tomb, in cradle and cross, in tenderness and compassion. For Jesus Christ, in whom you gather the hopes and fears of all the years, we bless your holy name, joining with all people of every time and place, and with angels and archangels who proclaim the holy birth. Blessed is our Savior Jesus, who before his suffering did earnestly desire to eat with his companions the Passover of liberation, who on the night that he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same, night, same way, he also passed the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. By what we do here, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, as we eat this bread and drink this cup, even as we celebrate Christ's birth, we are proclaiming our witness to his death and resurrection. In the body broken and the blood poured out, we restore to memory and hope the broken and unremembered. And we long for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Come then, life-giving spirit, brood over these bodily things and make us one body with Christ, that we may labor with creation to be delivered from its bondage to decay into the glorious liberty of all the children of God. In the name of the one, born of Mary, beneath a starry sky, the fulfillment of hope, and we continue to pray as we have been taught.
And so it is we remember that on the night our Lord Jesus was handed over to suffering and an unjust death, how he gathered with friends in an upper room, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And how on the same night he took a cup of wine, and after giving thanks, he shared it with his disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink from this cup, remember me. These are the gifts of God. They are given for the people of God. All things are now ready. the body of Christ given for you, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world united in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen.
from all of us at Charleswood United Church, the staff, the council, volunteers and members, the wider community, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. May God's blessings be known to you. Be well, be safe, and be hopeful. Amen. Thank you.